Elena Roberts, who is a professor of history at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, Dr. Roberts, thank you very much for being with me. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. So let me ask you about Juneteenth, which uh, no surprise to you, but I think to many certainly older white Americans may not be familiar history. Can you help us understand what exactly is Juneteenth? So Juneteenth specifically commemorates June 19th, 18, 1865, which is the day that Union General Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas, and read General Order Number 3, which informed enslaved people that they were free and informed their owners that they had to stop forcibly holding them in bondage. Why is this such a special day? Well, Juneteenth, as I said, has a specific context, but it's really grown to represent more than that. It's grown to represent uh, the freedom of enslaved people all across the United States. Because I think many folks would say, well, wasn't the Emancipation Proclamation by President uh, Lincoln more important than some army general going to the state of Texas? Hmm. Well, so the Emancipation Proclamation was, of course, a formal declaration, um, but it really only freed people in Confederate states, which, of course, the Union did not have direct control over. And so, really, historians have pointed to it as a call to African Americans to free themselves, which many did. They ran away, enforcing this for themselves. But Juneteenth is important because it really represents a use of federal force to enforce black freedom. This was necessary in Texas because they refused to recognize the Emancipation Proclamation. I think what is also surprising is that it happened more than what, two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and what we need to remember when we talk about Juneteenth is that every enslaved person experienced freedom differently. So emancipation happened differently in every town, every city, every state. Um, people heard about this at different times and people were able to realize and experience freedom at different times based on whether their slave owners basically allowed them to. And I think the other thing that's of interest is that the 13th Amendment, which essentially abolished uh, slavery across the whole of the United States, that was not adopted till after Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really the formalization, the 13th Amendment of what has happened. And so Juneteenth is, I think of it more of as a commemoration of that experience of hearing this important news. And the formalization kind of comes later from the federal government. Professor, can you help us understand, you know, how did this develop into a holiday? into a celebration? Well, there are really, uh, I would say tens, maybe hundreds of different celebrations across the United States uh, formed, created by African Americans that celebrate their own specific days of freedom. And so Juneteenth, uh, which is in Galveston, Texas, as I said, has really, I think, grown um, for a number of reasons. It's spread um, through different information networks, and so people kind of became more aware of Juneteenth, um, more so than like other days of commemorating freedom. But certainly there are many different days that one might choose to celebrate or commemorate this experience of emancipation. Could you explain to us from your perspective, how do families celebrate it? How has it been celebrated over the years? Uh, well, for my family, it took the form of a barbecue um, where everyone in the family got together. Uh, sometimes we talked about history, sometimes we didn't, but it's really kind of just Black family opportunity to talk about and kind of get together over a holiday that celebrates them, which is kind of rare in our calendar in the United States. Yes, I, I have to tell you that in reading about Juneteenth, I saw that there was a lot of association with barbecue and food, good food, lots of good food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the recognition of this as a state or federal holiday, I guess it's not a federal holiday, but I believe most states at least now pass resolutions declaring June 19th as Juneteenth. Um, is that a fairly recent phenomenon? 
Um, I'd say it's really grown in influence over the past 10 years through the efforts of Black activists, local activists. Um, and it's really, I think, a way that African Americans see um, to, other than Martin Luther King Day, to celebrate our heritage, this history, this important uh, day, not just in Galveston, but across the U.S. Do you think it's time to make it a state holiday, actual a day off from work? I do. Um, and I think that, I mean, the Black Lives Matter movement has pushed really so many issues related to African Americans to the fore that if there was a time that that would happen, I think it would probably be now. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the question is, when is it going to happen? Um, I gather there have been efforts to make it a at least a recognized holiday. And I think Governor Wolf in Pennsylvania is giving everybody, I think, 74,000 people either have the day off or they're going to get paid extra. Right. And I take it that's something you approve of. I do. <laughs> do you think that we're going to see more of these kinds of recognitions in the years to come? Do you think we've crossed a threshold here? I mean, that's an interesting question. There are so many different um, ethnic groups in the United States. Uh, obviously, that's one of the uh, things that people talk about when they talk about the United States. And there are so many different important holidays and commemorations to all of these different groups in the United States. So I think it's a question of asking ourselves as Americans, which states are important to us and what do we want to recognize? Well, that's a good point that you're making, Professor, because we are a multi-ethnic community these days. And if we have special days that recognize African-American heritage, I assume the, the uh, Hispanic community might have some days and, and obviously a variety of different European days. So, and Asian for that matter. So. I don't know, but <laughs> I, why not celebrate them all? <laughs> well, I've seen, uh, I've seen kind of people talking about how things like, um, I don't know, Cinco de Mayo, Chinese New Year, how these are kind of celebrated in the United States, but without the context of how they really started. So I think it's important that when we talk about things like Juneteenth and other commemorations that might be added that we do keep the important context of why these are actually important to the people who are celebrating it, who are the origin behind that. And I think it's also fair to say, and you as a historian can say this, that there really is a unique experience of the African American community in the United States that's different in many ways from other kinds of experiences of other groups. Is that fair to say? Um, as a historian of um, Black history, I would say yes, because um, a lot of the kind of racial dynamics that we still experience today are based on um, Black enslavement and the kind of white Black binary. So aside from, of course, Indigenous peoples, African Americans were some of the first people in the Americas. And so finally, Professor, let me ask you, are you going to do anything special to celebrate Juneteenth today? Well, this year I can't have a barbecue, so that's disappointing, um, but I'm sure I will do something with um, my friends here in some way, some virtual way. Well, Professor of History, Elena Roberts, thank you so much for spending time with us and helping us understand much more about Juneteenth. Thank you again. Thank you. Just because the weekend starts doesn't mean our commitment to excellence stops. Wake up to KDKA TV News Saturday and Sunday morning for overnight and breaking news.